Good afternoon, and welcome to AIADA's Auto Talk. I'm your host, Rachel Soleimani. Before I introduce today's presenter, a few quick reminders as always. Everyone that is registered for today's program will receive a copy later this week. And if you have any questions, feel free to enter them into the lower right side of your interface under the Q&A bar. Now join me in welcoming Google's Senior Automotive Retail Strategist, Kelly McNearney, also known as a Digital Transformation Evangelist. It's okay, I don't really know what that means either. Kelly has worked her way around the automotive speaking circuit the past few years, enlightening dealers about the best way to spend their marketing dollars and so much more. She's hilarious and really knows her stuff. I don't know why I'm still talking, I'm just the host. So Kelly, please take the mic. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody for joining our webinar. Huge thank you to Dan and Rachel and everyone at AIADA for inviting me to this webinar. I'm a huge fan of your organization and all of the fine people that are on the board um, and all of you who help make this organization run. I recently got to spend some time with some of you at the fly-in in Washington, D.C., where you stormed the Capitol uh, to make sure that our legislators know that these auto tariffs are not in the best interest of our dealerships or our consumers. So thank you all so much for the great partnership and for including me in that wonderful event and also in this webinar. Today, I'm gonna to do my best to show you all how to let go and let Google. And what I mean by that is that marketing has become increasingly more complex. And for those of us who are just in the business of turning a dealership, sometimes a family-owned dealership, maybe a newly acquired dealership, into a profit center, well, this is the session for you. So we're gonna talk about how we can help you simplify digital marketing so that you can let go and let Google. So we'll start with this quote from John Wanamaker, which anyone who's worked in advertising has seen, and it's half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half. Here's the trouble with that phrase, John Wanamaker, who you see there pictured, a marketing pioneer, he died in 1922, which means his ideas should have died with him, because now in 2019, we certainly know which half of your advertising is working and which half isn't. And if you don't know, well, today's a great day to turn that around and start getting some answers onto is your advertising working for you? Now, I'm gonna start by telling you a little bit about what Google has been up to here under the hood, behind the curtain of the walls of Google. I'm gonna give you some insight into what's been going on here that is now powering the changes that we've made to advertising. And it all starts with the game Pong. Pong is considered by many to be the world's first video game. It was developed in 1976, in part by Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak of Apple fame. Uh, before they launched Apple Computer, they were both working at Atari and helped develop Pong, which was, as I mentioned, the world's first video game. Now, that was in 1976, and all these years later, some engineers at Google who were developing machine learning algorithms decided that they wanted to take a crack at the game Pong by teaching a computer to play and seeing if the computer could perfect a video game by itself, by playing the game, losing, winning, and figuring out how to win more and lose less. So what they did is take a pretty common computer powered by a machine learning algorithm, and all they did was teach the computer that it had to get a high score, which you see in the upper left, and it had control of a joystick. There's the only two pieces of information it knew. So let's take a look at what happens. After 10 minutes, it's random luck. So unfortunately, I'm not good at technology, and my <laughs> image has frozen, but what you would see is that that ball is going off into the corners and the machine is not very good at this game after 10 minutes. But after two hours, the machine never misses. So it is now figured out that it can move the joystick to the left and right. And moving the joystick is what breaks the blocks and breaking the blocks is what gets to the high score. And so it has taught itself how to play the game Pong in the best way, meaning the most points in the fewest amount of time. What happens next is really amazing because you can't see it here, but the, the ball goes over the top of the stack of bricks and it starts breaking the bricks 
from the top. So now the machine is perfect because it, it has figured out if it moves the paddle in such a way, it means the ball goes through the wall of bricks over the top, it bounces around, it breaks all the bricks from the top down with as few moves as possible. And all of this happened over just four hours time. Now engineers at Google are of course not satisfied to defeat one little video game. So instead they were motivated to try to attack something far more complex. And what they did was take on the game Go. The game of Go is considered the most ancient and also the most complicated game, board game in history. It was developed in China almost 3000 years ago. And there are more permutations of this game than there are grains of sand on all of the beaches on, in all of the world. So suffice it to say, there are tons of different boards, circumstances, play phases of the game Go. It is for sure the most complicated game we could have taken on. So what the engineers at Google did was take this machine learning algorithm. They uploaded 100,000 games of Go to teach the machine how to play. So 100,000 games that humans had played and it uploaded those move by move, play by play into the computer so that it could learn from humans. What happened after a couple of days is that the machine took on the reigning world champion of Go, a man by the name of Lee Seidel, and the machine beat Lee four games to one. Now, Google engineers not being very satisfied with that one loss decided we need to do something better. And so they launched AlphaGo Zero, which was a similar machine learning algorithm, but this time, instead of uploading 100,000 games, it just taught the computer the rules of how to play Go. So it gave it no information about what humans would do, what human moves would be. Instead, it just taught the machine how to play the game. In a matter of four days, AlphaGo Zero beat AlphaGo 100 games to one. So it turns out that 3,000 years of accumulated human knowledge was actually slowing the machines down from doing their best work. And finally, the same machine learning algorithm was applied to the very complicated, of course, game of chess. It was called AlphaZero Game Changer 1. And in just three hours, Game Changer 1 beat the world chess champion, which was Stockfish, 28 games to zero. Now, this is not to say that we should all be focused on video games and now isn't this cool. It's interesting to learn about, but there are now more real world implications to machine learning. Keep in mind, machine learning is just a term for artificial intelligence that uses computing to do things faster and more efficiently. Let me give you a real world example. Of course, 2019 and 2018 have had their fair share of natural disasters, both here in the United States and abroad. And a team at Google decided maybe there was something more we could do with our access to technology and our great machine learning software to help people predict natural disasters more accurately and most importantly, with more lead time. They launched a project in India that mapped the flows of hundreds of rivers in India and uploaded that imagery plus weather data into the machine learning algorithm. Now you don't have to understand the technical aspects of how machine learning works. Lord knows I sure don't. It's not important that you have a computer science software engineering degree. It's just important that you understand that machine learning is just computers doing work faster and more efficiently than humans can. So it ingested all this weather data. It looked at the river flows, uh, the river patterns in India, and it has successfully been able to predict flooding more accurately than the existing weather system in India. That's important because it means people who live on the borders of these rivers now have early warning to evacuate, get out, seek higher ground, seek shelter, and in some cases it can save hundreds of thousands of lives. Machine learning is also applied to the field of healthcare. What you're looking at here is some scans of a woman's breast. So what we have done at Google, at the Google Health Sciences team, is start to ingest um, x-rays and other scans like the ones you see here in order to help healthcare professionals more accurately predict 
breast cancer diagnosis. Because what happens with humans, and if you've been through this experience, it's a painful one and you know, that when you are facing a diagnosis of this kind or any sort of illness diagnosis, time is very critical, as is accuracy. And so current humans are, of course, able to read scans like this and read x-rays and use their human eye to determine what's a tumor and what's not and what type of tum tumor and the location. But they were accurate on a scale of about one in four. For every woman diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer, one out of four times, the diagnosis is altered upon a second review of her scans which is a very frightening thing because now you start to think, well, who do I trust? Is it cancer? Is it not? Is it metastatic? Is it not? Do I need surgery? Do I not? So Google tried to attempt to solve this problem by letting machines learn and scan and ingest the data. And now accurate diagnosis of metastatic breast cancer is up in 99.9% .9 accuracy. And finally, in terms of helping the species on our planet, machine learning has been applied to tracking the location of whales across the globe. Now, tracking whales is no easy task. <laughs> None of this is very easy. <laughs> but tracking whales is incredibly difficult because um, whales live and swim in very deep depths of the ocean. So we don't have any technology that can capture them with video. So what the Oceanic Institute does is they use sonar technology because whales communicate um, through audio, through, through sounds that they make. So the Oceanic Institute and Google paired up because the Oceanic Institute has like, you know, 250,000 hours of whale sounds, but they have no human who can possibly go through all of those audio files and like, how many people would you need to hire to listen to all of those audio sounds and make any insights out of the data? So this is exactly what machine learning is really good at doing. So through a partnership with Google, in just a matter of a few hours, 250,000 hours worth of audio data were captured, analyzed, and now the migration patterns of these whales is very predictable, which means people who are trying to protect the whales know exactly where to go to make sure that they're not being hunted, um, to make sure that the water that they swim in is as clean as can be, et cetera, you get the ramifications of, of protecting wildlife. So machine learning also has implications. It's, it's not just about saving whales. <laughs> machine learning also has implications for modern businesses. For example, AXA Insurance came to Google with a major problem. 8% of their insured drivers cause a car accident every year, which for them is not ideal. What's a little bit worse is that 1% of those drivers were in an accident that cost AXA Insurance $10,000 or more. So these are considered high loss customers for AXA insurance. And now any insurance company has their own human team whose job it is to predict such a thing. It seems like an incredibly random thing. Who will cause an accident and when that will happen? It seems to me impossible to predict. Now AXA had their humans coming up with certain insights, like I'm sorry for the gentleman on the call, but men do tend to cause more accidents than women. But that's not a very useful business insight because what are you going to do? Not sell insurance to men? That doesn't seem right. So instead, AXA Insurance came to the teams at Google, and we developed a machine learning algorithm that ingested all of the data that AXA had about the accidents that their customers were involved in, which ones were high loss, which ones were not. And then we looked at a bunch of data about all of those drivers. And Google's machine learning was able to predict accidents with 78% accuracy for AXA insurance. 78% accuracy on something that seems completely random. Now I bring this up because those same things that are happening with Google machine learning that's predicting natural disasters, that's accurately diagnosing disease, the machine learning that is saving the whales, the machine learning that is improving accident prediction for AXA insurance, is the very same machine learning that is now powering Google Ads. Little nod to our chairman, Howard Hakes, and the Puente Hills Toyota store there. So the goal of this machine learning is so that we all as dealers can say, okay, Google, make us more money. The machines are so good at ingesting data and figuring out patterns and insights 
and who's in market for a car and who's about to buy and who has equity and wants to sell. They're so good at that, that we should get to a place where your advertising experience is automated and you get to, as mentioned in the title, let go and let Google. The main insight from all of this machine learning and automation for those of us in the automotive industry has been Google Store visits. If you are a dealership who isn't currently looking at Google Store visits on your ad campaigns, this is the day to start because this is free reporting. It's available in Google Ads right now, and here's how it works. One of your customers comes to Google, does a search, and they click on one of your paid ads on Google Search, whether it's a mobile phone, a laptop, a desktop, a tablet, doesn't matter. Whatever device they're on, whatever time of day, they click on one of your paid ads and are delivered to your website. Now, Google has nine properties with more than a billion users across the globe. Things like YouTube, Gmail, Google Search, Maps. And so we have really good data from signed in users about who's who. So when those users, after clicking on your ad, then visit your dealership within 30 days, Google counts a store visit based on your ad. Now this means you can suddenly have insight into your service campaign, how many people that saw your service special offer and clicked on that ad, then visited your service lane within 30 days. That's some insight that John Wanamaker didn't have before 1922. You can separate service and sales. You can look by proximity. So you may have a hypothesis at your store that all your customers come from a certain zip code. But what if in your Google reporting, you see that actually your store visits are all coming from a 20 mile radius outside your store. Suddenly, this means you need to market to different people because there are customers out there that you may have been overlooking. So the machine learning that is powering all of those you know, life-changing, globe-saving initiatives is also powering when we serve your Google ad and to whom and on what device and at what time of day. And we do this because we now have registered 45 million dealership visits in the last year across the United States, and that is for service visits and sales visits. And then all of that store visits data about those people who are primed and ready to go to the dealership is all imported into all of our products that reach 90% of people. So on the right there, you see people on Google, people on YouTube, people on Google Maps, and people on websites that are part of the Google Display Network, which like any display network, it's like 99% of sites. <laughs> so all of our customers who are using our products and searching for you can now be connected with and tracked, and we know who's most likely to come visit your store so that you can most accurately advertise to those people. Automated search advertising has a few options. One is remarketing lists for search ads. So what you see here on the screen, I did a search for dresses for work. Now, this is of course a highly competitive category. There are probably thousands of stores who would like to sell me a dress to wear to work. But my first result there, as you can see, is a website called lulus.com. They don't have any stores. They're just an online retailer. And they're somewhat small when you compare them to Nordstrom, who shows up first in organic. But the reason they get the valuable real estate at the top of my phone is because this is a website that I've visited before. And in fact, a website I've bought clothing from before. So Lulus is remarketing to me through search knowing that I'm a customer who's already aware of their brand. So I'm a customer who's most likely to come back and do business with them again. This is incredibly useful for dealerships. We've seen success across the country with dealerships who implement RLSA, remarketing lists for search ads, because you help us do the hard work of saying, who is most likely to come do business with me? And the answer is the people who have been to your website before, either to shop, build and price, search inventory, to schedule a service appointment, those are the people who you have a leg up on against the competition because they're already aware of you, they know you exist, and they've been to your website. 
So your marketing dollars invested on these customers are marketing dollars well spent that usually give a higher return on your ad spend because these customers know about you. There are other things like in-market search, which is Google, again, has nine properties with over a billion users each. And so we have our own private in-house data on what people's activities are online that lead us to the very insightful knowledge of who's currently shopping for a Toyota Camry in your zip code, has spent six hours online over the weekend, they've done their research, they've started looking into financing, we know how to reach that person and we can do it through this machine learning technology and make it very automated and simple for you all. Now it's not just search that benefits from all these machine learning algorithm advancements, we also have applied the same machine learning algorithm to similar audiences. So for example, you see there a search for me, are minivans cool? Yes, clearly they are. But kudos to KiaDealers.com here, who I wasn't necessarily searching for their product specifically, but because all the online behaviors that I have shown, I've been looking at online sites, I've been to dealer sites, I've been to tier one sites, I've been to comparison sites, I am in market for a car. So when I come and search for, are minivans cool? I get bucketed into an audience that's similar to someone who might be shopping for a Kia. And so kudos to them for saying, consider the Kia Sedona. We think we're pretty cool. Stuff like that, similar audiences, in-market targeting, RLSA, all of this is automated. So here's the beauty for those of you who've been doing search advertising for a long time, and you've got to come up with the keyword list, and you've got to come up with the bid, and now there's things called bid modifiers, and you've got to do negative keyword targeting, and you've got a list of tens of thousands of keywords and different bids for each one. You no longer need to do that because the same machine learning that is defeating Pong and Go and Chess is the same machine learning that is automatically pulling out the valuable customers from the muck. And all of it happens in an automated fashion as long as you let go and let Google. It means letting all of this automated technologies work, knowing that the goal is to get more business, more website traffic, more people on the VDPs, more appointments scheduled, and sure, if you really have to because you just can't embrace the future, more lead forms submitted. Now it's not just search that we have applied this to, we've also applied this same machine learning to display advertising. So you're lo looking at my obsession with Meghan Markle uh, and everything she does. So I'm online and I'm looking at a story about Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, and you best believe I'm gonna look at all those photos of their PDA packed moments on the Royal Tour. And while I'm looking at that content, Farm Girl Flowers serves a bouquet to me and it's done completely in an automated fashion. So that display ad that you see, nobody at Farm Girl Flowers built that. No web designer, no graphic designer made that ad. Instead, Farm Girl Flowers uploaded a few images of some bouquets, their logo, and a little bit of text, and Google Smart Display puts that combination into the relevant ad size and serves it to the person most likely to buy flowers. We are definitely in the age of automation where you no longer even need to specify exactly what your creative should look like. You just give us the basic bones and we will formulate the ad based on our years of accumulated knowledge on what person is most likely to click on what ad given what format and what size on what device at what time of day. And before you even ask, I know, I know, I know, our legal disclaimers in automotive, where do those go? There is the ability to still abide by our legal disclaimer laws and restrictions in this format. So we have customized this for automotive, Our disclaimers can still be part of the ad and be compliant. We've also done this for YouTube. So true view for action, one of the fastest growing, nope, let me correct that. Preview for Action is the fastest growing ad product at Google today. Because it's the power of pre-roll, so it's the same video as your TV ad or your pre-roll ad, 
but it's on YouTube, which is the world's largest video platform. YouTube reaches more 18 to 49 year olds on mobile phones alone than any cable or broadcast television network. So YouTube has this massive reach, but now it also has the ability to serve your ad, your pre-roll video to people who are most likely to take action. So in this case, we're seeing a Wendy's pre-roll ad. It's served to the right person at the right time, but also it's built for action, not views. So at the conclusion of this ad, you see a blue button that says, in the case of Wendy's, find a store. In the case of automotive, it could be call dealership, request a quote, locate dealership. There are all sorts of actions now that are embedded by machine learning in an automated fashion into your pre-roll ad to drive people to take action. So these are just some of the examples of products that we're developing using machine learning technology. Now, the reason that you wanna lean into this, the reason you wanna lean into machine learning and uh, adopt this let go and let Google mentality, there are three. The first is that it allows you to work faster. So some people, when talking about machine learning, they position it as, you know, having machine learning is like having Albert Einstein on staff. That's not exactly right. It's not like having one genius at your dealership. It's like having one billion interns. Machines are, are just machines. They are limited to what we tell them to do. They can't create concepts on their own. They don't come up with what to do next on their own. But they're excellent at performing the task that you provide them. So working faster means instead of having your team spend a ton of time building display ads, or coming up with ad copy for search, or God forbid, managing a list of tens of thousands of keywords, machine learning does all of that menial, and I shouldn't say menial, that sounds insulting. <laughs> it's not menial, but it is time consuming work. It does all of that much, much faster in fractions of a second. The other thing is that machine learning can take on millions of signals. So while we may have the ability to look through data, um, one Google spreadsheet at a time, machine learning does that by ingesting millions of signals about the user in fractions of a second. So machine learning and automation allows us to work faster. The second thing it allows us to do is work smarter. So we have heard from many people, many marketers in the automotive industry, that they spend about 80% of their time on manual tasks like bidding. When you let go and let Google and adopt these automated tools, and lean into machine learning. It means that that time is now freed up and you can spend your time building the strategy for your advertising, doing things that machines cannot do, and you leave those manual tasks to the machines because we've already addressed, they're gonna do it faster and they're probably gonna do it a little bit better. So it allows you as the human in the equation to work much smarter and do the things that humans are great at let the things that machines are good at do those tasks. Okay, so we're working faster, we're working smarter, and then the final one is that we win more. There has yet to be a case where a human managed campaign outperformed a machine learning automated campaign. So automation maximizes the outcomes of your advertising. Because again, these computers have ingested millions of data signals over many years, and we know who is in market for a car? Who is in market for new tires? Who really needs the oil change? Who is looking to trade in a used vehicle? We have access to all of this data and the machines can analyze it in a fraction of a second. So that allows us to win more outcomes, win more auctions and surface our ads to the right people. Now we're gonna spend a few minutes here on our final slide, which is this is the stair-step journey to automation. We launched a few years ago, what you see in the lower right there, the Google Dealer Guidebook. And if you haven't looked at it in a while, I recommend that you Google <laughs> the Google Dealer Guidebook. You can find this online through Google search. It's on our thinkwithgoogle.com website. What you may not have known when we launched the Dealer Guidebook a few years ago, was that all of the recommendations we were making then were really also part of our journey to automation. So let's start at the lower left. First step that we recommend in the Google Dealer Guidebook is applying the right audience to your marketing. 
And we're really good at doing this in search. I wish we were better at doing this with our television dollars or our traditional uh, radio or, or direct mail dollars. Uh, because this is where digital is stronger than any of those, and it's in the audience play. So I've said it a few times today. We know, based on all of the signals and the behavior, which audiences are ready to buy a car from us right now and which are not. And so in order to make John Wanna a fool, we only spend our advertising dollars on the audiences that are going to do business with us. And we don't waste them on audiences that sure are watching TV, but don't have a driver's license, just bought a car, don't plan to buy a new car, don't need a new car, don't want a new car, don't want to do business with you. So the only reason half your advertising might be wasted is because it's being wasted on the wrong people. It's not necessarily the wrong platform, it's not necessarily the wrong message, it's just the wrong people. So step one is making sure that you're targeting your advertising to the right audiences. When people apply audiences, like the ones I mentioned here today, in-market audiences, similar audiences, remarketing lists for search ads, those three that I mentioned earlier, when those are applied, we see 40% more efficient cost per action. The second step is then attribution. This is one where we really struggle in automotive, mostly because our purchase path is very fragmented and all of your digital partners lose insight into the purchase once we send someone to the store. So earlier I talked about Google store visits. We can get somebody to your dealership lot and we can report to you that someone who interacted with your ad on Google is knocking on your front door. <laughs> Please go answer. But we don't have your sales data. So that's the best we can do is show you that we sent someone to your store. The heavy lifting then comes from your side on making sure that you are matching the sales with the store visit. Bidding in that way, bidding on the most, the, the customers who are attributing, we're attributing sales to, um, provides a 5% lift in conversion. And not even bidding to those people, but also just measuring in the right way. Not assuming that the last click someone took before they got to your website was the only thing that we should attribute value to. Next is smart creative. So I showed you the example of Farm Girl Flowers. We also have dynamic search ads and responsive search ads, things that automate ad copy for search. Using smart creative and allowing Google's machine learning to pick the best creative message, the best size, best text for the right device, in general drives a 15% lift in click-through rate. So you will see additional traffic to your website because your creative will be better. And then the fourth step is auto bidding. This gets into impact at scale, as you see mentioned there, which is, do we as humans need to sit around and have a conversation about what bid should be applied to what keyword and what campaign and what ad group? Or if we let go and let Google and let the machines determine which is the right bid on the right person on the right device, perhaps that's the better way to do business. Those who do adopt auto bidding see a 15 to 30% lifting conversion. And then finally is advanced measurement which is another challenge that we at Google experience and that you all at the dealership experience, which is solving for the right business outcome. I think you'd still be hard pressed to find more than a handful of dealers in the US who are optimizing their marketing dollars towards sales. We generally see dealer advertisers still optimizing towards things like lead form submissions or even phone calls, VDP views, but a VDP view does not a business outcome make? <laughs> what we really need is to start powering our advertising based on sales data. So that's our advanced measurement piece, which is to say, the better data you give the machine, the better they will be at delivering the outcome that you want. So this is our journey to automation. We start with our audience targeting and then we move into attribution. The creative gets smarter and more automated. Then the bidding becomes more automated. And then finally, we start supplying the machines with the best possible data and measurement to say, here we go, here are the list of sales that I have. Now go find me more people like these who are most likely to have a high customer pay RO or to come renew a lease or to come buy a certified pre-owned vehicle. All right, so that concludes my presentation portion. Um, I know we had some questions that uh, Rachel shared with me earlier. So I will do my best to answer some of those. And then I see some questions too have come in here through chat. 
Um, so I'll start with the first one I received, which was in regards to YouTube. How do I best monetize YouTube to drive revenue for my store? My personal favorite question, because I am a lunatic about how effective YouTube can be um, and how few of our dealerships across the US are actually using this one in the right way. So just last week, Brian Benstock, the GM of Paragon Honda in Queens, New York, which is the number two CPO Honda store in the country, gave a talk and shared that 48% of his store visits, which he is measuring and watching closely, were driven by YouTube. 48% of people who walked into his dealership saw his YouTube ad and then visited his store within 30 days. So I think the most underutilized marketing platform among dealers in the US is by far YouTube. We are still really dedicated to advertising on local TV, we give our dealer association money to local TV. We give our offers and incentives to local TV because that's the thing that worked for a really, really long time. And for nine years, I worked in TV. I worked at ESPN for nine years and that worked really well. But now people are watching less TV, which we all know. Television ratings are on decline, which we know. People are cutting the cord, which we know. But what they are doing is still watching not just the same amount of video, TV, I'm finger quoting, but you can't see me. <laughs> they're still watching video. They're just not watching it the way that they used to. So they're watching it on things like YouTube. And YouTube not only is the number one video platform on mobile devices, but it's also breaking news. It's also the number one connected TV video platform. So more people watching YouTube than watching any other. Oh, I'm sorry. I should say ad supported because Netflix is bigger than YouTube on connected TVs, but you can't buy ads on Netflix yet, maybe ever, we'll see. So for now, YouTube is the, num the number one, the largest ad supported video platform on connected TVs. So if you are of the mindset like, I really wanna get my message on a TV screen, great, you can do that through YouTube as well. So to answer this dealer's question, how do you best use YouTube to drive revenue for your store? You put your video messaging on YouTube and you apply the exact same automation that we're talking about here today. So you adopt things like in-market audiences. You adopt things like TrueView for action, which is going to incite and become a catalyst for the person who sees the pre-roll to then take an action based on that pre-roll. A really, really awesome platform. And speaking of Netflix, Netflix is actually the largest purchaser at Google of TrueView for action. So Netflix, a very sophisticated digital company, is leaning hard into TrueView for action because they're getting a ton of subscriptions to Netflix through that TrueView for action ad format. So those are the two things that I would do to use YouTube to drive revenue for your store. Create your video messaging and then deliver it in a more targeted way. So targeting in-market audiences, targeting obviously geographically the people who are most likely to do business with you. You can, yes, measure store visits from YouTube. So your YouTube campaign can report how many people saw your pre-roll ad and then visited your store. And then finally, TrueView for action. Um, we, we have in beta right now a lead form, uh, TrueView for action for lead form. The challenge is it doesn't mean that suddenly people want to fill out a lead form. So we still see only 24% of people who bought a car in 2018 submitted a lead form, only 24%, which means 76% of people who bought a car last year never submitted an online lead form. So what we decided to do instead, or in addition to, I should say, is TrueView for action for phone calls. And we know that once we launch that, uh, our dealer friends in the US are gonna be very excited about that development because that means someone sees your video ad about your dealership, your product, your customer service, and then right from that video ad that they're watching on their mobile phone, within one click, they're calling your store. So watch this space uh, for that product, which is coming soon. I hope that answers the question. All right, I have another question here, which is how do I separate from my competitors if we're all applying the same strategy? Great question. Now, what automation and machine learning don't do, because remember, it's just machines, is differentiate your business. We have nothing to do with the customer service someone experiences when they call you, email you, or walk into your store. We have nothing to do with your inventory and selection 
We have nothing to do with the uh, experience that we will have, that the customer will have in your service lane. So the things that differentiate you in the uh, physical world are the same things that will differentiate you in the digital world. If you offer customers a better experience, better product, you will still be the leader in your market. What digital marketing does do is allow you to cast a wider net for those customers. And I can assure you, because it is my full-time job, <laughs> there are not a lot of dealers in the U.S. who are fully adopting all of these automation strategies. So if you start doing this today, I guarantee you, most of your competition is not. So this gives you a leg up on that competition. And once they have caught up and start applying these same automation strategies, Google will have launched something new and better, and we'll continue marching forward together. All right, I got another question here um, in the Q&A, which I thought was very good from Bruce, who says, so you're telling me I no longer need my digital advertising agency to handle my online spend. No, I am not saying that. Chances are, it is most likely that you definitely still need a digital advertising agency. Because remember, the machines are only doing what we're telling them to do. So we do still need a strategy in place. We still need someone mining the data and determining where our customers are coming from. We still need someone analyzing the website performance to say, you know, where are we bouncing? Where are people spending time? What content on our website is best? What do we need to surface in our ads? So absolutely a digital advertising agency, if your advertising agency is working out great for you, they're absolutely still needed. Plus the machines can only do what they're told to do. So somebody still has to go into Google ads and launch all of these campaigns and make a differentiation between your service campaigns and your sales campaigns and your certified used campaigns, certified pre-owned and used campaigns. So there is still a lot of manual labor attached with running advertising. It's just that we are now cutting back on the amount of manual tasks required. So when you decide, all right, we've got a new vehicle launch, I'm gonna launch a campaign in my market, the amount of time the human has to spend executing that campaign can be reduced exponentially. But you still need human brain power making those decisions. It's just the implementation. We're working faster and smarter, so the implementation has just gotten much better. All right, we have another one here that's very interesting. I have a third party running my SEO, so I don't have access to Google Ads account. How do I know that they're doing it right? Let's first make a quick distinction. SEO is search engine optimization. So that's the organic, the free stuff. SEM is Google paid ads, the ads on the top of the page. So um, for today's purposes, we're talking about SEM. SEO is an entirely different um, account structure business strategy. Um, and that relies almost 100% on the content of your website. So it's really quite simple. We've, there are many people who are making a lot of money over complicating SEO. SEO is very, very simple. The best website that offers the best information for the particular search that these are is a website that will surface to the top. And there are thousands of factors that go into that. Does your page load quickly? Is it optimized for mobile phones? Because now 70% of automotive searches are coming from a mobile phone. So if, you're, if your mobile site is garbage, no matter how much you pay trying to optimize SEO, you'll never be at the top. So there are certain factors that go into SEO and, and being strong there, but none more important than you have to have an updated, mobile-friendly, relevant website with the information that the customer is looking for. There are no hacks, there are no workarounds, there are no tricks, there are no black boxes, there are no secret doors. It all comes down to, do you have the best website to answer the question the user has just asked us. Now, in regards to SEM, which is the paid marketing part of search, how do you know that your agency is doing it right? I encourage you to Google the Google Dealer Guidebook, print that off, and at your next meeting with your dealer agency, put that on the table and say, where are we in the Dealer Guidebook? All of our premier partners, and there are many of them that represent dealers across the US, have been briefed on the Dealer Guidebook, Many of them helped contribute to the dealer guidebook. They all know what this is, and they all know this is the steps that we recommend they take. So if you happen to have a meeting with your agency and they look real uncomfortable <laughs> at this meeting, it's time to have a conversation with your agency about we really want to be following the Google dealer guidebook, so how do we change our accounts to do this? And then I would have a conversation with your agency about these things we're talking about today. Ask them what automated tools are being used in your accounts. 
ask them if they're leaning into our machine learning tools. Now listen, I work at Google, I represent Google, I have some, some skin in this game. It's possible that your agency has tested one of the solutions I'm talking to you about here today, and it didn't work for them. It's possible, and that's okay. If your agency has tested it, and for some reason it didn't work out great, then let's not you know, hold their hand to the fire and make them do things that aren't gonna work for your business. It's just that in most cases we see, especially for dealer accounts, these are the things that are working well. So for all of you who are having conversations with your agency, you're not quite sure if they're doing the right thing or what they should be doing, um, that's the best advice I can give you is print off this journey to automation, print off that dealer guidebook and have a conversation with them about where are we now for my business. Okay, great. So um, that I think is the end of the questions that I see here. So I will wrap it up there and hand it back over to Rachel. Uh, if you have any questions, Q&A is still open, so let me know. Otherwise, I am going to hand it back over to Rachel and say thank you all very much for attending today. I hope you learned something new. And um, should you have any follow-up questions that I didn't address, please feel free to email those to Rachel, who will get in touch with me, um, or Dan, and they'll get those to me. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks for being great Google partners. I hope you're excited about all these new innovations that are gonna help make your advertising faster and smarter and better. Um, we've developed all of this with your businesses in mind, and we have some pretty good insights now thanks to our great partnerships like with the one with AIADA where we've got our nose all up in your dealer business. So we, we're pretty clear on what it is you need from us and how we can make you succeed. So we have done just that. We've developed tools that are gonna make it easier for you to spend your money on the people who are most likely to give it to you. So we don't want you wasting your money. We don't want you having the John Wanamaker point of view that half your advertising is a waste. If half your advertising is still a waste, it's because you're not paying attention. So now in 2019, it is completely possible to make sure every dollar you spend provides return for you. Um, and we're here to help you do just that. So thank you all so much. I'll hand it back over to Rachel. Kelly, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to speak with us. We really appreciate it. This is a very hot topic. Those of you that have sent questions in through the chat that Kelly did not answer, I will be sure to get her your question and your contact information so that she can reach out. Uh, if you have any more questions, like Kelly said, you can email me at Solomani R, S-O-L-I-M-A-N-I-R at AIADA.org, and I can pass those over for you. Uh, Google is really such a valued affinity partner of AIADA, so thanks again, Kelly. We have a robust auto talk series to continue. Join us at 2 p.m. Eastern on June 18th as Laramie Sanquist of Federated Insurance discusses how the dealers are getting schemed on both cars and money, including some of the latest trends. And in July, our car guys are back to address how to protect your used car margins. So be on the lookout for promotions on how to register. For more information about AIADA, visit AIADA.org or call 1-800-GO-AIADA. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and have a great day.